So I cannot wait for you to experience it with us. It's an amazing journey. Now if you're this person who's being worshipped and, you know, and you're, you're having cultural influence, uh, you know, all of this can, can you know, kind of have a weird uh, effect, I would think, on the individual who, as you said, you know, one day is, is very celebrated and nobody wants to call him back you know, some time after. Uh, so have you ever had the ability to work with these people and, and help them find a, a light or a path that, that has them put all this in context and live a, a, a rich life um, spiritually? Well, you know, I'm going to say yeah, yes, sometimes and sometimes um, there are actors who I'm still in touch with who I think I became a surrogate mother to mm -hmm. that um, I didn't know how else to be their representative. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I love them ferociously and I loved them in who they are. And, and we, uh, uh, maybe a couple times I talked about my faith, but certainly not from you must believe what I believe, mm -hmm. but what they experienced from me is love. And so I would say that's a spiritual experience. Yeah. Um, there are other times where there were more direct things, um, particularly with young women mm -hmm. who, you know, my job as a talent agent was to bring, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't a gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. uh, people didn't hire me to be a Christian talent agent right. and make sure that nothing uh, non-Christian comes across my desk. That was the farthest thing from who I was. I, my job uh, was to put as many opportunities for work in front of actors as I could. And uh, they weren't all clean and nice. Right. Uh, a lot of them were brutal, um, bloody. Um, and that's, those are the movies. That's TV. And if there was interest in one of my actors, uh, my job was to put that script in front of them and say, you're their interest. What do you think of this part? And sometimes they would enter into a discussion with me. Uh, sometimes they would say, I love it, book it. And it's like, that's my job. I'll do that. But of the times where they would say, you know, this one scene disturbs me and, and I'm not sure why, I'm, how do, what do you think? That's what opened up dialogue to say, well, since you've asked, I think that's going to objectify you in a way. So if it was sex, a sexually simulated scene, whether it was language, uh, whether it was a woman um, being brutalized, there was a gal that I represented who um, in the course of the time that I represented her, uh, she, when I first met her, she had come out of like a playboy background of uh, a darling girl. Mm -hmm. And then she got married and then she said, you know, my husband doesn't want me to do as much stuff that I used to do. And so can you help me? And I'm like, yes, I can. Like, let's talk about that from your perspective, what that means to your marriage. Mm -hmm. How does this part affect your relationship with your husband? And, and then she had a baby and she had a baby girl. And now there was the possibility of saying, you know, whatever you shoot, it's gonna be out there forever. And someday your little girl is gonna ask you about this. And, and I wanna have that conversation. How do you feel about that? And so I never said, I think you should, or I think you shouldn't. I got the opportunity to have more of the uh, Aristotle you know, conversation to have them consider 
And, and for her to go, oh my gosh, I don't want my baby girl to have to even consider this in her life, much less watch her mother act it out. Right. That became a very clear choice for her and a moral choice, um, which, which impacted uh, a relationship. And, and that's where fear comes in. Mm -hmm. See, people don't wanna make moral choices because they believe that they, there's a fear factor here that if they say no, they'll never have the opportunity to work for that person again. Mm -hmm. And so the, raw, the job to say, so what? If that happens, if you're the person that I think you are and you're the actor that I think you, think you are, and if you have the confidence in who you are and you don't wanna do this kind of work, but you're willing to do it because you're afraid that that person will never come back to you, can we stand against that together, against the fear? And can we come against that and say, that's gonna be okay because there's gonna be plenty of other people who are gonna want the opportunity to work with you. And I don't care what it is, there are times in any career where fear and power play such, they press in and we make choices that are fear-based. So Hollywood's no different from any other place where we make fear-based decisions. And, and one of the most powerful things that that God taught me when I was first a Christian. I think it's my, the signature verse of scripture over my life. Perfect love casts out fear. We have no concept of perfect love outside of God. What, well, how can perfect love actually do this? But if you were gonna say, if you were gonna cast it, an action hero whose job, his superpower is to cast out fear. Well, that to me is who the Lord is. That's who Jesus is. Like that's, this person who comes into each one of our lives that says, you know what I'm afraid of? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of that for you. Well, how does he do that? How does he say, don't be afraid, which is throughout scripture. Don't be afraid. You're standing in the face of war. You're standing in the face of famine. And God says, don't be afraid. Well, uh, well, I'm pretty afraid. So how are you? How is your presence going to change that? And how that happens is that God comes and says, I will be with you. And I'm not here to be known through circumstances. If the famine happens, I'm still God. Mm -hmm. I still love you. So how do you experience famine in such a way where God is still present to you? And when you can shift that paradigm and understand that God is not known through circumstance, that God is known because of God, because of presence, because of his unrelenting pursuit of being known to us. Well, now that means that you can be diagnosed with cancer and still know that God loves you. For many people, those things feel like polar opposites. I can't, if I'm diagnosed with cancer, that means that God doesn't love me. But faith teaches us, no, God is there. So you put that now, Hollywood seems like not such a big deal, right? right? right. But fear is so prevalent. So when you can stand and say that you're being called to something, and I'm talking about to people that aren't believers, you're being called to something, your, your spirit is speaking to you, that you don't feel right about this, uh, say no. It's okay to say no. And the power of no is more powerful than the fear. Right. And so these factors of the people then that live in LA, that are brushing shoulders with those celebrities, with those celebrity directors, you now stand in a place that they're not quite sure how you stand there. How do you be that person who's not afraid? And that's where, you know, you get some Teamster truck driver that says, oh dude, you're driving him back to his room at night. And he's like, man, how is it that you're always happy, always kind, and I don't see you responding in fear to all the other stuff that people are responding to. I've heard this story, oh dude, it's because I love the Lord. What, tell me about that. <laughs> right. So when there's a pervasive sense of that, or when we can start to have the aroma of that, mm -hmm. you actually have the opportunity for people to live in this city, to live in any city in the world, in a holistic way and not in a broken way.
That's it for this particular interview. Thanks for joining me. Really excited to take this ongoing journey with you as we keep bringing more content. If you haven't already, you really should subscribe to this channel. There's a lot of phenomenal content coming down the road into the future that you'll want to know about. Leave a comment down here. I think people would love to hear from you and then you can hear from them too. If you liked it, go ahead and give a like. It only takes half a second and share this with people that you care about. The world needs more light in it right now. So thanks for being with me. Hope to connect with you again soon. Thank you.